who we have with us today is Dr. Barbara Purdy and her husband Hank Purdy. So Dr. and he's also a Dr. Purdy. So the female of the species, Dr. Purdy, Dr. will be. Uh, she was here two years ago and also uh, helped with the city in their facility that they were putting on the south end of this project and she is still very much interested in coming forth with excavations in that area as we do surveys in another part of that project. Uh, my main interest in archaeology is the peopling of the Western Hemisphere. And from a local point of view and from a national point of view, in fact an international point of view as Ruth said, uh, I don't believe there's another site that has the potential of this old site that unfortunately was dug before the modern day techniques. We've been down here off and on for five years. Uh, I'm convinced that there's still some undisturbed area despite uh, the canal and all the other construction that's gone on. Site needs to be dug. Uh, you may see things on television about famous early sites, the Clovis sites, maybe pre-Clovis sites, but the honest to goodness truth <clears throat> is after over 150 years, we still do not know when or how people got to the Western Hemisphere. And this site, Florida, Florida in general, and this site specifically, has the combination of the extinct animals that we know went extinct by 12 or 13,000 years ago <clears throat> and uh, humans, I don't call it the very old man side, I call it uh, <laughs> the old girl side <laughs> and, but because um, I think women were probably around also but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you go. It's a modern trend, <laughs> I'm not really that modern, you know. Uh, so anyway, um, now we have that incised bone, which I'm sure that you are all familiar with by now. And that is the clincher, because as strange as it may seem, because of the fact that this site has been controversial for 90 some, almost 100 years now, the presence of that bone in this area demonstrates without question that people were here when those animals were still roaming. And <clears throat> because the person that engraved it, if he didn't do it, he or she, at the same time that the animal was around and they became extinct 13,000 years ago, there wasn't another person up until historic contact that had ever seen an elephant. So either that bone dates from the 19th or 20th century, or it dates from 13,000 years ago. So <clears throat> that puts this site, and uh, that bone has gone around the world, and we have received uh, all kinds of comments from people as far away as Japan uh, about the bone. And we would like to go in and put in a formal excavation in an area that we believe is not disturbed and just go down uh, inch by inch and retrieve everything that is present at that site. The soils, plant material, animal material, uh, interpretation of what was happening climatically, uh, just anything that we can think of. And uh, there's been recently a <clears throat> uh, theory that the animals became extinct because the comet hit the earth 13,000 years ago. There are a lot of very reputable archaeologists that believe that, a lot of reputable scientists that believe that, uh, but then there's a lot of people that are poo-pooing the idea. Uh, <clears throat> there is a contact point at the site between one stratum, stratum two, that has the animals in there, and stratum three, which has more modern material, that contact uh, may hold some clues if we can get what they call nano diamonds and iridium and that sort of thing uh, that may demonstrate that there was some outer, outer space activity 
that spread literally across the continent. So, anyway, the, the, the site is so important to people in Barrow Beach because of the young people having an opportunity to read about the site. But nationally and internationally, uh, it has uh, <clears throat> maybe even a greater uh, impact. 